Hello students, my name is Matt Kuyper, and we're going to talk about risk versus reward. To better understand risk versus reward, we first have to understand what's risk and what are the rewards. When investing money, the risk you take is not getting back all the money that you put in. On the other side are the rewards. When you invest money, your hope is to grow your money, to gain more money, to have more after you're done with the investment than what you started with. Now the question is, why would we want to take risk at all? Right? I mean, like, that sounds dangerous and, well, risky. We could all put our, mat our money under our mattress. We certainly could, but then our money wouldn't be working for us. Our money would not be making us more money off of what we already have. But when you're looking to grow your money, you need to factor in the risks of what you need to use the money for and if you're going to have that all back when you get it. My guess is if I asked you as a class, would you rather make more money or less money off of your money? Uh, it's a pretty simple choice. I want to make more money. But in order to make more money, you have to take more risks. And that is why we have to factor and weigh these things out. When it comes to investing, there's a saying, never put in more than you're willing to lose. And that's something we want to factor in as we make our, our decisions of what are we can use this money for and how much am I willing to lose. So in general, guys, the more risky something is, the more reward you're going to get. Inversely, the less risky, the less reward or money you're gonna make off of that investment. The key is to finding a balance to putting some money in low risk places and high risk places, but that all depends upon the goals that you have set aside for those dollars. One of the things you wanna think about is how soon you're gonna need that money. So the sooner you need it, the less risky of a place you want to put it because you need to know in a very short period of time that what I put in is what I'm gonna get back. If you have a concert, a video game, uh, or a sweet new purse that you want to buy. You need to have the money you put in come back to you so you can actually afford it. Let's look at something a little more long-term, retirement. I know you guys can't even begin to fathom what that means, but you have a long time. You can take a lot more risks. You have time for that to correct, to make you money back to cover that loss. In the short term, that may not be something that happens. Looking at a couple of risk categories, typically they break them out into low, moderate, and high. When you look at a low risk category, it typically falls into a savings account at a bank, maybe a CD, uh, something with a little more interest, but you have to tie your money up for a little longer, or you can always stuff it under your mattress, but now you're not gonna actually make any money. When you jump into the moderate risk category, you have conservative stocks, things that are pretty stable and aren't expected to move much. You have mutual funds. Mutual funds are a group of stocks, which means as one changes, the others maybe are more stable and they can ebb and flow and stay more stable. That's the goal with a mutual fund is you allow a more even path because everybody is adjusting for everybody else that's in that portfolio, if you will. And the last is developed property. So if there's already a house on something, uh, you can rent it out, you can sell it pretty easily because there's not a lot of risk in trying to make it into something that it isn't already. And the last category is high risk. Here we're talking about individual stocks that are volatile, IPOs, brand new stocks that no one knows what's gonna do. You have undeveloped property, right? If there's not a house already built there, are people gonna wanna move here? Is the house gonna be something that they like? I don't know if I'm gonna be able to turn around and sell it or rent it. That's a lot more risky. And ultimately, when you're looking at the funds that you're about to put into these investments, you have to decide what category. And a lot of that, again, has to do with time, right? If something is volatile, moves around a lot, it takes time to correct any losses. If it's something that's short term, like a CD at a bank, you give them some money, they say in two years, you can have it back and here's how much I'm gonna give you. It's pretty stable. Typically, because you're younger, you have more time for things to correct. You have more time for the markets to make you money back on riskier investments. There's a strategy out there that you adjust your portfolio from high risk to low risk as you progress through various stages of life. This allows you to take the benefits early on of getting into something risky with some higher returns, but as you get closer to retirement, you scale those back and make them more safe so that when you do retire, you have those funds. Now, a tricky thing that occurred and can occur is what if you were in a stage where you need to sell off some investments in order to put them into a low risk category but they've experienced losses. This is something that happened in 08. There were a lot of people that were nearing retirement, but the stock market took a huge dip during the Great Recession. And that caused a lot of people a lot of stress because now they couldn't let go of those investments because they would realize the loss. A loss is never realized until you actually sell the underlying investment. So just because on paper, it looks like it's a loss, giving it time can make that come back up on paper. But for a lot of people, they needed to sell them. They were retiring. 
and that can put people in quite a bit of a pickle. And the question is, why does this all matter? You know, why don't we just put our money underneath our mattress and call it good? Well, we have financial goals. We have a standard of living that we hope to maintain when we retire. And through investing, we can get a leg up on that. We can make a little extra money off of the money that we currently have. And being too conservative, putting your money under your mattress can put you at a financial disadvantage when it comes to time for retirement. You may not be able to hit your goals. You may not be able to live in the house that you hope to live in, in the neighborhood you hope to live in. But through wise investing, weighing out the risk versus the reward, the stages of your life, you can better position yourself to reach those goals. I personally am a little bit conservative on my investments. I'm about 50-50 of my money being in pretty low risk stuff, and the other 50 is in pretty high risk stuff, more aggressive uh, EFTs, um, more aggressive mutual funds with my 401k, because I do have a little bit of time left to recover any of those losses. I then like to keep a bigger chunk in a savings account for emergencies, uh, for upcoming events that I know I'm going to need. So that's kind of how I've broken my portfolio out. Guys, one of the cool things about talking about risk versus reward is it means you've made a commitment to saving and setting aside money. So this is a great place to start, a great thing to be talking about, and you have to decide what are my goals, what are my risk tolerances, and where are good places that I can find to blend those things. So guys, keep saving, keep asking these questions, and set yourself up for a good financial future.